It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is really to inspire you, the entrepreneur. Our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of those resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Molly Pruitt, who's in the building. Hello, Molly. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm super excited to have you here on the show. Um, people are reading the title. They're, they're going to read your bio and all that good stuff, but they're reading the title and they're wondering, Shay, integrated wealth. Okay. First, what in the LL Cool J is integrated wealth. And number two, why is it so important now more than ever before? Can you frame this conversation for us? Absolutely. Thank you again so much for having me. So uh, background is in uh, counseling. I'm a licensed professional counselor, but more so as a person, as a person that I identify as an entrepreneur, I realized that I kind of felt like I was playing this game of whack-a-mole where I'd get one part of my life sort of squared away and then this other area was kind of falling apart. And I just, I felt like I was spending a lot of time and energy really trying to work harder. And as I've learned in the entrepreneur space, it's much better to work as smartly and as efficiently as possible. So wherever you can put a system into place to help you really feel like you're advancing and getting momentum forward, it really helps us with our mental health. It helps us with our self-confidence. It helps us with how we feel inside. So to that end, the word integrated means composed and coordinated to form a whole, okay? Uh, a whole, W-H-O-L-E, <laughs> whole. Um, wealth is really the word that I totally wanted to turn on its head because as entrepreneurs, you know, sometimes we're broke, sometimes we're billionaires, and somewhere we're in between. So inside, it's a state of triumph, success, flourishing, thriving, expansion, and abundance. And we can really turn it on its head, this whole wealth conversation and say, I can have that at any stage of life. I can have it whether I'm launching, whether I'm working that nine to five still, whether I'm full on into entrepreneurship, whether I'm having to take a break for a health issue, we can figure out how to hold that integrated wealth as our beacon to help us stay focused on where we want to go. So that's, that's what it's about. I love how you put that together, by the way. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you mentioned mental health. We're going to come back to integrated wealth, but you mentioned mental health. And at a time where there's so much chaos going in the world right now, uh, it doesn't matter if you believe there's an inflation coming or you believe there's going to be uh, you know, a recession coming. It doesn't matter if you like this president or the last president or you like this party or that party. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's so much going on that, Folks are stressed. So take a moment, if you would, and talk to the person right now. Uh, talk about what is mental health. That's important. And two individuals, I know you can handle this, two individuals. One, for those folks that we need to be on the signs, if family or folks that we know are struggling with mental health. And then two, yeah, let's start, let's, let's start there first, because that's really important. So it's really interesting reading some reports like 76% of Americans that go to the doctor report stress as their number one symptom. So it's really mm. like this overall, I feel stressed. So sometimes we don't know exactly how it's affecting our mental health other than this abroad, we can't sleep, I'm not sleeping well, I can't remember things, um, brain fog, um, anyone especially in this period of time, regardless of what you knew about mental health in years prior, because we went through, um, you know, that collective situation with um, COVID, it actually, anytime we have a virus, we, a lot of us really experienced having it, and it really can mess with like your um, executive functioning, your ability to cope with stress. That's what viruses do to our bodies. So we haven't really had like a population impact like that in our lifetime. And so we're really dealing with a lot of the effects of that. Plus we had a lot of grief and loss and a lot of job loss. Um, loss doesn't have to result just in someone not being here anymore as far as you know, passing away or transitioning. It can be losing a job. It can be losing a relationship. It can be losing your business. Some people lose their business during COVID. So um, with it, we've just, there's just so much, it's very complex, this, this mental health bucket that we put it in 
but I, it has impacted so many more people that never really dealt with anxiety before, never really dealt with depression, because that's what a virus can actually do to your physical body. So it's important to have the conversation in all kinds of different places, especially in the entrepreneur space. You know, it really impacted us in so many ways. You know, you on your website for those folks that are following you and trying to find you, you have you name you know a company a better way. All right, I think it's better. Is that right? Yes, a better life, a That's better right. life. Right. Why was that so near and dear to your heart that folks are very clear that it's not about the life you have today? And that was the Shea Brown interpretation. It's about yeah. a better life, and how do you get that? I'm so glad you asked me that because it was on my heart when I just started into my master's program. A, a, a better life just came to me. I said, when I get to be a private practice practitioner, that's what I'm going to name it. And that was back in the day with um, Joel Osteen and a lot of live your best life. And those were all great. But the where I was in my life, I lost my mom to a long battle with cancer. I was at a crossroads with my profession. I was in manufacturing sales. And I was like, wow, my mom was a teacher. She was really sad to retire. I don't know that I would even be sad to retire, but I can't quite get behind this. I just want to live my best life ever. I'm just not in that place. I didn't have really a context for depression and anxiety as they're called clinically, but that's definitely what I was experiencing as well as undiagnosed neurodiversity, ADHD, if you will. Um, and I said, you know, if I could just have a better life, not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be magical, but it can, can we get better? Can it get better? And it really can get better. And uh, so that's really the impact that I wanted to start with 14 years ago. Yeah, I like it. A better life. And there is a way to do that. And let's let's get back to talking about being the whole person. Um, yep. you, we we had talked to how we can identify folks. Uh, take a moment and talk to the individual that is stressed. Uh, we have a number of folks on here who are dualpreneurs. Um, they work a full time job. Um, they're a full time entrepreneur. They're on their way to being a nine to five millionaire. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Um, there are also individuals out there who take care of their family. Uh, there are individuals who support their community. There are folks who are involved in a lot of different organizations, and they may be overwhelmed. And uh, what would you say to those folks that tune in here, not only to be inspired, but they're like, look, look, I'm curious. You got her here, Shay. This is her profession. What's one, two, or three things that I can do? Um, and I know it's a loaded question, but you know, best you can frame it. They can do to, to put them in a better position so they can have a better life. I love it. So I'm glad you said that. I created a method called the AIM method. Um, and ah. It's awareness, insight, and modify. When um, clients come to see me, they're usually dealing with something that they're not aware is happening, or they know something's happening, but they're not sure why it's happening, or they know what's happening, why it's happening, but they're not really sure what to do about what's happening. So I want to give that to you as sort of a fast pass grounding a place to go into, okay, what is happening? Why is it happening? And what am I doing about what's happening to get yourself out of that overwhelm? The overwhelm kind of sees everything happening all at once. And again, that can happen from brain fog, lack of sleep, worry, just burnout, really systemic burnout that comes from working the nine to five plus our entrepreneurial positions that continue to shift. So that's a way to get grounded awareness, insight, and modify. And before you modify, you kind of understand like how you're coping. And then the next thing you can do is add these four as aspects of your life. So physically, financially, relationally, and spiritually. So what you can do is say like, okay, What's going on in my financial life? Okay, I'm aware that I'm on target to meet my numbers. Why is that working? Because I'm making my phone calls every day. Okay, and how do I need to modify anything about that? No, I'm doing really well. So I'm going to put that in a check mark that I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm on. I'm on track with my finances. Okay, what about with my health? Okay, I'm aware that I've said that I want to go walking, you know, and take care of myself and burn off a little bit of steam. Um, why, um, why do I want to do that? Because I know it's really important to keep myself moving. 
Um, what am I doing currently? You know what? I'm booking too many appointments. So I'm not taking the time. I'm putting that on the back burner. So I'm going to modify and I'm going to put that walk first thing in the morning. Not easy. None of this is just easy or really that simplistic. These are some ideas about how to just start getting out of that overwhelm and just starting to get some grounding to start figuring out which way to move forward in your life. Very quick explanation for a lot of. <laughs> no, nah, I like it. I mean, I, I know you could do a whole episode on AIM. I know that. I mean, I know that you probably do a whole week's training uh, sure. on that. And and if folks are listening to you, they can they can hear the passion. We can see it yeah. in your eyes. We can hear it in your voice. And now they're curious: Who is this person, Shay? What is her her backstory? Um, the letter on the trajectory. So, two part question: What's your backstory? Yeah. There was a defining sure. moment where you said, you know, this is what I'm born to do. Yep. So it's so funny. I did not grow up in like a mental health house. I grew up in the suck it up buttercup <laughs> form, if you will. Sorry if that's too crass for some of you, but it really was like just figure it out, try harder, if you will. So I didn't really have any frame of reference related to mental health counseling and frankly, not even entrepreneurship. Ironically, I didn't grow up in an entrepreneur family. So I'm a first gen entrepreneur. So I'm figuring out a lot of that. But when I went to college and went to TCU, uh, Texas Christian University, go frogs. Um, I learned about psychology and I took this class and I was immediately just gripped with there's people who study human behavior and why we do what we do or just theories of all of that. So that was the first time I was introduced to it. But I was too, um, I had some low self-esteem when it came to um, math. And so I didn't want to pursue like a PhD in psychology because I just didn't feel like I could do it. So I went into sales and manufacturing and went about that for 13 years. And I mentioned a few minutes ago that my mom got sick with cancer. I was upwardly mobile with this company. Um, but really, whenever she passed, it was four days before my 30th birthday. And I just literally came to a crossroads and said, you know, what do I want to do for the, the rest of my life? And it, the answer just kept coming as help people. And the way that that came about was, you know what, I'm going to go get my master's in counseling. Um, and then they even said in the beginning of the program, they're like, at the end of this, you'll be a counselor. I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't think I'll be counseling people, but at least I'll understand how to help people better. But it turned out that I went ahead and took a package from the company that I was with and moved into this whole new, I literally leapt forward into entrepreneurship, not really knowing what I was doing, but thank goodness with the support of God, <laughs> I've figured out a lot of things. Um, and so literally that's my defining moment was what is your life's purpose? Why are you, why are you here? And it was to help people. And the way that it was given to me was through the counseling methodology. So now what we're 14 years later and uh, thousands of clients served and hopefully several happy ones. So. God, that's, that's so marvelous. Thanks for, so much for sharing. What do you, what do you enjoy most about it? Oh my gosh, watching the light bulbs, the ahas. Um, it's really shocking. Um, a couple of things. When I work with couples, I love working with couples. And um, when I give them like permission to say, like, you know, your family's had their way of doing things, this is your chance. You're not your mom or dad. You're not where you came from. You can be a sum total of them, but you can also decide you and your person, your partner, y'all can decide how you want to do this thing how you want to move forward. And so it's just, you watch eyes light up, like, oh, you're right. Not like they need, per we need permission, but there's something about like the freedom and like that awareness building. You're like, oh my gosh, you're so right. I could totally do this. Yay. And then there's like such excitement and then um, helping people receive compassion and, and respect towards them. Like there's so many people that just have the brake speed off of them every day and they come in there and they're expecting to have bad news. And I'm just there like, I can feel your load. I, I, I'm sorry that you've gone through all this. I, you, I hope you know that that's a lot for a person to go through. And it's just like, wow. Like it just, you just, I just get to witness that. And then people go off and like change your lives and like do massive things and like, way more courageous than I am. And I just, it's 
I'm, I've always got chills and it's legitimate. I, I'm just so grateful to be able to be in that position, frankly. I know. I, thanks for sharing. They're sitting there right now saying, I want a better life. I want a better life. And I want a better <laughs> life. And I want a better life. I know they're saying that right now. So if you can, um, if you say, hey, here are three steps, three things you can do. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're all at different places, different spaces in life, in your careers, in your business, with your family. Um, but she's going to do the best to say, hey, here, here are three principles um, that she can share with you in the time that we have that you can have and live a much better life than whatever it is now. And isn't that encouraging to know that you, intuitively, I know you know there's another level, but to actually know that you can get there. And so take out a paper and pencil now, by the way, because you have someone and this is what she does all day, every day. To serve mm -hmm. folks just like you. So through the power of these fiber opted lines, please, Molly, go ahead and share what's, what's three things that they could do to help them have a better life. I tell you what, one that just comes to the top of the list is I am resourceful. When you're sitting there saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know what step to take. I don't, what is the next move for me? Um, Remind yourself, say the sentence, I am resourceful. And resourceful means I have figured a whole bunch of stuff out. I, it may have taken me a long time. It may not have been, you know, the right way the very first time. But if I look back and I'm honest with myself, I am resourceful. I figure things out. I'm an entrepreneur. I also work nine to fives. So like I figure out a lot of stuff. I am a parent. I, have figured out how to do this parenting thing. It's not always glamorous, but I am resourceful. If you will give yourself that mode of encouragement, your brain from a neuroscience perspective will start saying, oh, that's right, I am resourceful. And it'll start pulling up all these images or memories of where you, when you're resourceful or what to look for or where to go for support. Um, it's really amazing. When we're in overwhelm, that is a fight, flight, freezer, fright, stress response. We mentioned stress at the beginning of the show, the interview. So you're usually in some kind of stress mode. So everything's floated up. That's where the overwhelm is. Remind yourself, I am resourceful. That would be tip number one. Tip number two is to say, is, is a, it's called noticing. So what you do is you kind of, let's just say you are dealing with a problem. You actually like pretend like you go through the motion of, it may sound weird and you may feel a little strange, but you kind of put it out in front of you. Some people will like imagine like an object in front of them or look to the side of themselves and say like, what do I notice about this situation? So um, for example, I'm not really sure if I should do this deal or not. And you go back and forth in your head, put it over here, put it outside of you. Some people like to write it down too. And you just say like, okay, what's going on with this situation? And it gives you a chance to get a little bit of your logic mind engaged when your emotion mind is kind of taking over. So that's tip number two, noticing. That's what it's called is noticing. Um, and then number three is get support, get yeah. support. Um, psychology today is one of my favorite, uh, things that goes across the country. It may even be international. You literally go to psychologytoday.com. I'm not a paid affiliate or anything like that. I refer my clients to it all the time. Um, just, um, if you will go to psychology today, plug in your zip code and you will come up with a whole bunch of different providers in your area. Uh, definitely go to look, look there, go see if you can find somebody, get support. You know, a lot of times when I say like, what is it about today that had you pick up the call to reach out for support? Just like, you know, I've probably waited so long. I've talked myself out of it. I just, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm ready to go talk about what's going on. And I'm like, come on in. Let's, let's, let's get, let's get to business. And your therapists that really care about you, life coaches, pastoral care, you're going to say, I'm here. I'm your consultant. I'm here to help you get what you want and what you need. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to um, anything. I'm here to help alleviate. I'm here to help you. And, and that's truly what we're actually called to do. And uh, we really want to do. We like to do. So you know, I'm amazed. You 
Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying those are the three. I hope those are helpful. No, th those are very, very helpful. You know, one of the things I admire about you is you, you mentioned early on that, you know, a lot of this you had to learn yourself. And as a first time entrepreneur in the family, congratulations, by the way, it must feel good. Must feel good. Uh, you are the one in the family. You are the one, um, as Ed Millette likes to say, you're the one. My question to you is um, along this journey of life, have you had any mentors that have had an impact to you? It's my favorite question to ask. Now, those that are tuning in every night, you know, I was going to ask this question. You can lean forward. You can lean forward. And for those folks that are new, welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. But the question is, uh, what's one of the mentors that Molly's had that she's taken the lessons from that she can pass on to you? And this is something you can benefit from. You may never meet her mentor. Doesn't matter. But you can take that principle that she has and you can apply it in your life. Thus, you have a better life. That's right. That's so interesting. So in the counseling world, one of the reasons why it's like such a thing is we go through 3,000 to 4,000 hours of training and we have to have supervision before we're able to support people on our own. And so my very first supervisor, she, um, she said, how is your ego strength? <laughs> and I was like, mm, mm, kind of weak, you know, I don't know. But what she would do is she would sit there and she would look at you face to face and she would say, I believe that you can do this. I believe that you can figure this out. You let me know what you need from me and I believe that we can figure this out. And there's something so, again, kind of just empowering when somebody in a mentor place that knows everything about the profession knows has seen out things for so many years and they're willing to say like when I see you I, I believe in you um, whenever you have the opportunity to encourage another person uh, when you have the opportunity to just you know bless their life in that way when you're able to see a strength that someone else possesses that they can see for themselves and you highlight that for them a great mentor is willing to, to just really put that out on the table and not make it all about themselves. They're willing to say like, I see that in you and they want to pull that out of you um, and pull that forward. So that is definitely a huge, huge mentor. She's still great. She works with the VA. She's freaking amazing. She's just, she's like the best thing. You're just grateful that people like her exist in the world. So that's one for sure. Yeah. You know, we're, we're at a point in the show that I like to talk about, and it's one of our personal mantras. And for those folks, it's 11 o'clock. You know, I know you like to listen for this word in words. You get to say this every day to yourself that today is my January 1st. I mean, go ahead and say it if you haven't said it already. Go ahead and say it. Today is my January 1st. Doesn't that feel good? Happy New Year to you. And for those folks that are new, we want to welcome you to the family. Today is our January 1st is our personal mantra. The first I want to encourage you, if you haven't been over to YouTube, go over to YouTube or to the podcast station or on demand. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel at I am Che Brown. Just put in I am Che Brown and you'll be able to subscribe so you can get all the early episodes and all the cool bonus stuff. For those folks that are hearing for the first time, today is my January 1st represents a fresh start. It represents a do over. It means our past, no matter what that past is, no longer equals our future. And so my question to Molly is that when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, by the way, happy new year to you. What do you hear? <laughs> and um, what was one of your January 1st moments? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and I don't know how much your podcast and, and group, I, I've, I don't know if there's a long, uh, I don't know if you talk about spiritual connection here. I am fumbling over how to even talk about it. No, still, it's, it's fine. Go right I, in, go right ahead and talk yeah. about it. It's fine. Yes. My day one, it was, I was in my mid thirties. Uh, well, probably, yeah, about 33. And I had, I had really indoctrinated myself with like, your issues are like your cross to bear, like you've just got to deal with them. Like that's just um, the victim mentality or fixed mindset. I uh, didn't have really a frame of reference for what those were. I just was like trying to suck it up, I guess, and try to make the best of things. And I just had a massive spiritual download from God that was just like, no, I got all but abundance. I want you to have a better life too. You know, the, this better life concept is not for other people only it's for you as well. And it was just like a massive, literally like tectonic shift 
in my whole life and perspective. And all of a sudden, all the grief I was carrying, all the low self-esteem, all the bullying and victim mentality stuff that I was still carrying, um, it, it released. It was really like, absolutely like an about face. It's like he took my shoulders and just like turned them in the correct direction <laughs> to help me get that momentum to move forward um, on this journey. And that's when everything really, really, really started moving in a great way and a happy pace for me in my life. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Thanks so much for sharing. Very powerful. Uh, Two-part question. Number one, yeah. uh, first, I got one question. I'm just curious. What do you do for fun? Like, when well, you're not out doing what you're doing now, like, I'm always curious, what do people do for fun? Yeah. So for fun, I am grateful to have my 11-year-old daughter, and she's literally, like, my bestie. Like, I call her a sunny side up person. Like, I'm kind of more emotional, like, what does it all mean and purpose and all this stuff? And she's just like, ready to party and super, super happy. So we'll decide on our little girl dates. I'm teaching her about entrepreneurship. So she'll go to work with me and she earns a, a salary or, or some income from that now. And um, then we'll go out and we'll celebrate. And we literally spend the day just like talking and vibing and just like being present. And so I don't know if you can have the hobby of just like connection with your family, but the way that we're able to have that special girl mother daughter girl to girl you know kid to mom just all of the different dynamics we have at play like we just have the best time like connecting and growing as people on the planet so that's really my most fun thing to do for fun and enjoy every moment of it <laughs> enjoy it because that's a very very special bond that you have with your daughter Two-part question. Number one, what type of clients are you working with these days, if, if any? And number two, how can folks best connect with you over and beyond this conversation? Sure. So I love working with couples. I call it like the modern day power couple. So I'm absolutely obsessed with people who are just super excited to be together, but they know that they have like these, there, there's actually a thing. I don't know if y'all want to know this little tidbit, but couples um, have a perpetual issue it's uh, just something that just sort of aggravates the couple, like for the, a lot of times the longevity of the relationship. It doesn't even mean that the relationship is broken. It means that there's something about the way that you're two people coming together. It's just like learning how to get better about navigating being different people on the planet, you know? So it's really interesting. So that's a little tidbit to be aware of. That's a noticing um, uh, skill right there. So um, but yes, I love working with couples. I love working with individuals. I love working with entrepreneurs. That's really my specialty. And then going in really into the neurodiverse space. We have a lot of people who were not diagnosed with ADHD or highly sensitive or auditory processing or sensory processing, processing and we're very much in the entrepreneur space. So it's really fun to be able to connect the dots there to make sure that you're um, getting that momentum and really healing from the inside out and uh, making progress where you want to make progress. So those are my three favorite areas to work with, for sure. Good. And how can folks best connect with you? Sure. So best ways to connect with me are, um, I have my website, which is www.selfcare-matters.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Pruitt, I think it's at Pruitt Molly. <laughs> my name was taken or something, so I had to come up with something on the fly. And then I'm on Facebook pretty regularly with Molly A. Pruitt. So, or Molly Ashmore Pruitt, I think is what it is, actually. Well, thank you so much, I Molly. I need to get better at, like, remembering <laughs> what my socials are. I don't know. And I'm on Psychology Today, too. So, but that's just, um, uh, yeah, you can find me in real places. I'm on LinkedIn, too. That is too. so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Find her, find her, find her. Uh, with that being said, let me say thank you for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a blessing. And, and thank you, the viewer. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching every night, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's this time that I just love to say these words. Um, it comes from the heart. I hope you can feel my heart. I hope you know what my heart is. Um, if you haven't heard these words today, that you are awesome, that you're truly amazing, you're incredible, you've got greatness inside you. And for that reason, that today, Today, today is your January 1st. Because of that one reason, that means your best is still yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Isn't that cool? Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name, in case you forgot, 
It's Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember this, time is long. Life is short. You got to live in the moment. Well, you got to make it count. God bless me. Wish you success. Thanks a lot, Molly. I appreciate it. We're out of here. Thank you all. Peace. Thank you.